हमारी जिंदगी जो है यस्तु को जला देती है जब हम सड़क पे चलते हैं क्या हमारी वो वाली जिंदगी हम लीव अ लाइफ दैट इज वेरी वेरी ट्रांसपेरेंट एंड इन कम्युनियन विद गॉड When the Lord God Almighty touches us, lives are transformed, hearts are changed. हालात बदल जाते हैं हर चीज बदल सकती है यीशु के छूने से लेट्स आस्क द लॉर्ड टू टच अस लेट्स आस्क हिज होली प्योर लविंग काइंड मर्सीफुल टच टच इन फिजिकल लाइफ स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ इमोशनल लाइफ लॉर्ड टच अस ओ लॉर्ड एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म अस एंड रीएनर्जाइज अस हालात बदल जाते हैं Dead situations will become alive in the name of Jesus, by the powerful name of Jesus. Halat badal jaate.
आपकी मजूरी का काम है हम पे जोर से फादर सन एंड होली स्पिरिट एंड आज आप अपने दिलों को खोल दें कानों को खोल दें क्योंकि प्रभु की आवाज आज आपके हृदयों को चेंज करेगी Amen. जैसा बाइबल में लिखा हुआ है साम वन में वी आर ऐसे ट्री है जो प्लांटेड बाय द रिवर्स ऑफ द वाटर हम एक ऐसे ट्री है जो नदियों के किनारे लगाए गए हैं और जिसके पत्ते हमेशा हरे बुरे रहते हैं और कभी मुरझाते नहीं है एंड वी आर दो पीपल वी आर हाईली फेवर्ड वी आर पिकुलियर पीपल वी आर हिज जनरेशन एंड वी आर चोजन जनरेशन and we are people after his own heart hallelujah you know tell tell yourself i am of i am man after his own heart hallelujah you know you can tell i am a woman after his own heart i am highly favored jahan par bhi main kadam rakhunga mujhe success milega no aaj main nahi preach karunga aaj हमारा बेटा जतिन इज गोइंग टू प्रीच मैंने उसको बोला था लास्ट संडे एंड इट्स ऑल फ्रॉम गॉड जतिन की जो बैकग्राउंड है वो बाइबल कॉलेज आता है अपनी मास्टर्स कर रहा है तो अपने दिलों को थाम के रखें क्योंकि उसकी नॉलेज नहीं उसकी हजूरी इसके द्वारा बोलेगी क्योंकि जब तक पवित्र आत्मा हमें ना सिखाए हमारी सारी नॉलेज वेस्ट है आई नो ये बच्चा पवित्र आत्मा की अगवाही को जानता है पवित्र आत्मा में भरा हुआ है और आई जस्ट वेलकम बेटा जतिन आ जाइए इफ यू आस्क मी ही एक्चुअली टच द क्रक्स ऑफ टुडे सर्मन व्हेन ही से दैट इट इज गॉड्स प्रेजेंस दैट विल लीड एंड नॉट द नॉट द इंफॉर्मेशन और द नॉलेज दैट वी हैव एक्वायर्ड ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो थैंक यू आई स्ट्रांगली बिलीव दैट इट इज गॉड Uh, who has orchest- orchestrated everything Hallelujah. and 
This is my first time uh, preaching virtually, so I am a little nervous. I pretty much don't know where to look. So if I look somewhere where you are not uh, being able to contact with my eyes, do you want me to look there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, as Uncle Raj said, last Monday when I was driving back from Beaufort to Atlanta, um, he called me and he asked me if I can preach on uh, preach this Sunday. And I was quite hesitant at that time saying yes, because every time I'm asked to preach, I the first question that rises in my mind is, what am I supposed to preach? And this question was uh, popping back in my mind when I was talking with Uncle Raj and, you know, this question also reminded me at the same time the call of Moses. Um, I'll definitely show you how. Uh, but before that, I think that Moses' narrative or his call narrative is quite charismatic and profound. It is recorded in the book of Exodus and it is the very first deliverance of the people called Hebrews by God. And this narrative also registers God's very first revelation that God gave to Israelites. Even though you'll, when you'll start reading the book of Genesis, you'll definitely find that God has revealed himself or the name Yahweh comes back and forth in the book of Genesis. But Exodus, in the third chapter, it is the very first time that God reveals himself as I am who I am. Hallelujah. The God Yahweh. And that too when Moses asked God, what is God's name? And you know, it is really profound if you ask me that a person... Uh, who knows God through his ancestors. So Moses knew God through his ancestors, uh, as in God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His Egyptian roots, his Egyptian roots, his Egyptian upbringing, I wouldn't use the word roots, but his Egyptian upbringing, um, his Egyptian upbringing made him ask this question to God. What is his name? Until before that, uh, God was known as God of uh, ancestors. So as I was reading on Moses' call narrative, I was debating whether I should be, be whether I should be critical of Moses' narrative or should I or I shouldn't be. Even though eventually, um, though eventually I realized that it is neither. I don't have to be critical. I have to be empathetic to Moses' uh, call narrative. And I'll read from Exodus chapter 3, uh, verse 1 onwards. And this is what the scripture says. Moses was keeping the flocks of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing. Yes, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord so saw that he had turned aside to see God, to see God called to him to the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I, am observed, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good, broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So I come. I will send you to Pharaoh. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign for you that it is I 
who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall, you shall worship God on this mountain. Let us pray. Eternal God, the one who calls us by our names, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for using your unworthy servant. Everything that is in me, Lord, is evil, and every thought that I have is to devise evil, Lord. But it is your spirit, Lord, that enables me to worship you. It is your spirit that enables me to see the good in you, God. It is your spirit that enables me to do everything to glorify your name. Thank you for your presence. I ask that you may use your servant so that your people may be edified, so that your people may be healed and your people may be delivered lord Hallelujah. in jesus's mighty name lord we pray Hallelujah. amen Hallelujah. well the moment i started preparing this sermon i was going to use chapter 3 and chapter 4 which is the entire call narrative of uh, moses uh, but eventually i realized that you know what uh, that would be a lot for people uh, for one single sunday morning so I am just reading for, uh, I just read from the first verse till the 12th verse, but I'll encourage you all to read the entire third and the fourth chapter. A Hebrew man by the name of Moses, perhaps not very old, holding his shepherd's stick and lowliness, began his day by shepherding flock, not standing, and now standing before the bush that is on fire. And he is amazed that this bush does not burn. Even the charisma in the narrative is so profound. Yet I cannot see that Moses is in awe. Matter of fact, he is back and forth asking questions to God. However, the most essential part of the whole call narrative, which is chapter 3 and 4, is found in the verse 10th, 11th and 12th. That is what I'm going to use for today's Sunday morning. You see, the question that Moses raised is one of the most genuine questions that is ever raised by an individual who is called in ministry. Moses' call begins with Moses' response, Here I am. And at the same time, he asks God, Why me? Who am I? You see, I see myself in Moses. This is somewhat similar to what most of our believers wrestle with. Often I find myself in Moses' shoes asking the same question. What is this God that you have called me for? Why you have called me? What is the meaning and purpose of my call? Today, this morning... Or when the moment I spoke with Uncle Raj, I was asking this question, how am I going to preach? How will I preach? And there have been endless nights where I have been asking this question to myself. Why God? Why did you call me in ministry? Seeing such plurality in the thoughts of believers as well as in the society. Every second of our life, we want to throw God out of our lives. We want to reject. We want to constantly reject God and the message that God gave us. Nothing has scared me more in these uh, two years Two years have been two years have been the time where I have been in the United States and seeing this plurality in the thoughts constantly I am reminded of how little I know, how unworthy I am to share the gospel. And I am constantly reminded how much it is about God and what God is able to do. If you closely read the third verse, third, uh, excuse me. If you closely read the third chapter, 
and the verse 10, 11, and 12. This is what the verses say. But Moses, uh, excuse me. So come, this is God telling Moses, so come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God in the mountain. In my opinion, what Moses asked in the, um, the question that Moses asked in the verse 11 is more of a reminder, a more of an introspective question for our present time than the question that Moses was raising. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? It is nothing but quite true. It is Moses' experience that is making Moses raise these questions. He has never spoken to an eternal, all-knowing, all-powerful God. Hallelujah. Moses, if you, if you read the first and second chapter of Exodus, you'll come to know, and as well as the book of Genesis, you'll come to know that people of Israel were were uh, they they migrated from Ghana from Canaan to to Egypt and there they have they have had been living there for almost 400 years now this community knows little about their ancestors i'm not rejecting that they don't know but i i strongly believe that they know quite little about their ancestors and Moses grew up in Egypt as with, with, the, with, the, with the, uh, the royal kingdom and everything. And what he has seen growing up is Egyptian deities. And Egypt, Egyptian had deities for everything. They had a, a polytheistic perspective. The, the, the term polytheistic means many gods. So Egyptians believed in many gods. Every god has an ability to do certain thing. And every god was delegated a certain position in the hierarchy. So Moses, the question that Moses is raising to God, that who are you, which could be fine in the third, four, 13th, 14th, and 15th verse, who should I say? Who, who, is, who is sending me, God? Who, who, who are you? What is your name? Moses, Moses knew exactly Moses did not know who this God is and his questions are exactly what we raise in our present time. You see, as a believer, uh, when I came to faith, it has been almost a decade now. I did not know who exactly called me and I was 19 years old sitting on a on a park bench and I heard two statements mm. the first statement said that you are not meant for this Hallelujah. and the second statement said that you shall speak for me Hallelujah. it was the year 2013 when God spoke to me those two statements and it has been almost a decade when these when those statements uh, came into manifestation and eventually in those years, God taught me layer by layer, step by step that who God is. If I would have, if I would have got excited and started preaching at that time, I would have made a huge mess of myself. The God that we serve does not require skills. Hallelujah. But when he calls, Hallelujah. he polishes our yes. skills Amen. according to that call. Amen. People of God, remember our skills, our talents, and everything that we hold valuable yes. does not work towards the call. But it is the call that shapes 
polishes and uses our skills and talents. If God would have, if God would have, if, if, if based on, if based on our talents, if God would have called me, I would, I would have been the, the, the worst decision that God would have made based upon my talents and skills. But it is God's call that shapes and moves you. See, the heart of Moses' call lies in the 12th verse, which redefines who Moses is and how the great call on Moses' life will be actualized. And this is what God has to say to Moses, who is raising the questions, why me? And I read to you, I will be with you and this will be the sign for you that it is I who sent you remember people of God remember that your call and your ministry begin from God and progresses and transpires because of God over the period of time I have met so many people so many people who have boasted in how prophetic they are, who have boasted how many churches they have planted, who have boasted how many people they have healed, who have boasted how many countries they have preached, who have boasted how many people listen to their sermon. Remember, people of God, that everything that we are able to do in our respected calls is only because God is present with us. And this is exactly what God is telling Moses, the one who is, who is the first person to be called for the, for, for the liberation or the rescue of Israelites. The first person to whom God is revealing God's self. And this is the thing that God reveals about God's self. That it is I, I, and only I who will be with you and this will be the sign for you. Now remember, people of God, God's presence with us is a sign for us. It is first sign for us and then later on for people. You see, when I, when I talk about skills and our talents, I'm not rejecting your talents or skills. What I'm saying is that you and every person who is called in ministry is unique. Amen. There's a particularity to your, to your, to your call. Hallelujah. There is a uniqueness to every individual's call. And every call, God, God, God has this ability to weave different individuals of different calls together to present and to, to create this grand narrative. Remember that you and I are called for particular per, particular reason and there's a uniqueness to our call. I have so many times seen that people start imitating their 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 elders or the people who were um, who came before them in the ministry and you know people people have this tendency of trying to prove themselves and they'll quote that Paul says that as I follow Christ follow me but what I'm saying and what Paul was saying is it is first the Christ who we need to follow Stop imitating others. Your call is unique. Amen. You are created for the purpose. Amen. Always remember that your call is from God and will only transpire by God's presence in it. 
and when we raise the question who we are it is not to diminish our being and particular identity but to remind us who we are in the call that god has on our lives you see paul has said it very profoundly and this is what i want to read um before i read that actually i uh, i would share another story of of someone's call it is found in the book of acts and we don't have to actually read it but you know if if you'll read the 7th 8th and 9th chapter you'll find this person by name of ananias and it says the ananias of damascus so don't confuse it with ananias and sapphira but this particular man god spoke to him and told him that wake up go to that particular house you'll find a man with this particular name if if you'll read the book of acts you'll find that there's only one place where this name is registered and there's only one person there's only one person who is i would say saved in that person's ministry Ananias was the one who prayed for Paul. Hallelujah. People of God, it is not about the numbers. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not about the numbers. It is about listening to what God is calling you to do. Ananias went and prayed for just one person. by the name of Saul at that time who was later known as Paul that person Paul changed the history of Christianity remember that your call is particular remember that your call is unique and there's a purpose to that exact call and i would say that a similar thing happened with one of the one of the famous evangelist evangelical christian by the name of billy graham he was 16 years old and at that time in 1980 1934 he was the only person that got saved in a revival He was the only person who got saved but that person preached oh, to hallelujah. millions and millions and millions mm. Don't forget the uniqueness and most importantly and most initially it is God's presence that goes with you hallelujah. for any kind of ministry when moses raised the question who am i i believe every individual who is listening need to ask this does not need to raise this question but need to ask and tell himself or herself who am i and just remember what god has to say to that question or to that statement your call is from god hallelujah respond to it Hallelujah. People are waiting to get delivered. Mm. Families are waiting to get reconciled. Hallelujah. People are waiting to hear this good news of deliverance. Mm. With a closing statement, I would read what Paul has to say from to the to the church of Corinthians. And this is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 onwards. Consider your own call brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. 
God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce to nothing, things that are, so that one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. I think there is nothing more profound or nothing more exact than these words of Paul that summarizes today's sermon. Remember your call. Remember the uniqueness of your call. Remember the one who called you. And remember it is his presence that will shape, move and enable you to to fulfill that call. I, I pray and I, I, I really do pray that today, this morning, you will accept that for what God has called you for. Amen. Remember that it is God who is calling you. Let us pray. Eternal God, I thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you for everything that, that you do, Lord. Thank you for calling your people in ministry, Lord. I pray that all those hearts who have been skeptic, all those, God, all those hearts who have, been, who have been wrestling with this question, Lord, who they are in that call, I pray that your spirit may lead and speak to their hearts, that they may hear what exactly you are calling them. Let them identify the particularity of their call and at the same time appreciate the, the call and the narratives of different calls that are surrounding them, Lord. I pray that you will, you will speak to their hearts and they will hear what you have to say and that your presence is what they need to seek and it is in you and about your name that they have to boast. And not what they are able to do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you. May the God bless you. And he was talking about the call. God is calling you. You know, Aisa hi nahi hai ki aapko sirap pulpit ke piche hai. Woi calling hoti hai. Aisa nahi hai ki mujhe sirap church mein ja kar pulpit ke upar chadna hai. Or mujhe bolna hai. That's my calling. No. Calling kuch bhi ho sakti hai. Maybe you can play the music. Maybe you can clean the carpet. Maybe you can clean the bathroom. Maybe you can just greet people there. You know, jab koi church mein aaye, you are the greeter. Aur aap kisi ko greet aise karte ho, to usko wo baat chhu jati hai. That's your calling. Never know. Aapko apni calling recognize karni hai. You know, काफी लोग बोलते हैं कि मेरे पास तो पास्टर की कॉलिंग है मुझे कॉलिंग uh, ऐसी है कि मैं पास्टर बन जाऊं और बाहर जाऊं तो वो बाहर चला जाता वो पास्टर या वो वो पर्सन वहां पर जाकर कभी सक्सेस नहीं होता तो वापस आता भी क्या हुआ पता नहीं यार मिनिस्ट्री नहीं चली क्योंकि गॉड ने आपको कॉल किया ही नहीं था उसके लिए Recognize your call. Just ask God. Help. Say, God, help me. Prabhu, aapko madad karega. Go on your knees. Read Bible. Fast karo. Taki Prabhu, aapko aapki calling bata sake. Thank you, Father. Lord Ji, just Psalm 23 me likha hai. His goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Kab? When you follow your call. 
इफ यू आर नॉट फॉलोइंग द कॉल ऑफ गाड एंड द गुडनेस एंड मर्सी वॉन्ट फॉलो यू आपको कभी फॉलो नहीं करेगा गुडनेस एंड मर्सी फॉलो करेगा आप इमेजिन कर सकते हैं कि दो बड़े बड़े एंजल्स एक आपकी राइट में जा रहा है और उससे भी बड़ा एंजल्स एक आपके लेफ्ट में जा रहा है बिकॉज यू आर फॉलोइंग हिज कॉल आप प्रभु यीशु की कॉल का पालन कर रहे हैं उसने अपने दो गुडनेस एंड मर्सी आपके साथ साथ चल रहे हैं फादर आई प्रे फॉर हम सब के लिए प्रभु जी लॉर्ड हेल्प मी एंड हेल्प ऑल ऑफ अस फादर गॉड रिकॉग्नाइज अवर कॉल हमारी कॉल क्या है लॉर्ड हेल्प अस हेल्प अस यस लॉर्ड बहुत से क्वेश्चन आते हैं दिमाग में जब मैं चर्च में जाना शुरू किया तो बड़े पास्टरों ने बोला कि तेरे ऊपर कॉलिंग है तो मैं क्या करता था पता मैं क्या सोचता था कि माय कॉलिंग आई वाज क्लीनिंग द बाथरूम्स वैक्यूमिंग द चर्च ब्रिंगिंग द वाटर फॉर द पैस्टर यू नो आज जतिन प्रीच कर रहा था तो मैंने क्या किया इसके लिए पानी का ग्लास लेकर आया क्यों क्योंकि ही इज एट ओसी पोजीशन में है जिसके लिए मुझे काम करना है यू नो आई हैव टू हम्बल माई सेल्फ आपको भी हम्बल करना है अपने आप को वेन आपका पास्टर प्रीच करता है मेक श्योर यू ब्रिंग द वाटर जब आपका पास्टर प्रीच करता है मेक श्योर यू टेक केयर ऑफ हिम जब आपका पास्टर कोई काम करता है यू मेक श्योर यू क्लीन क्लीन द रूम आफ्टर चर्च फिनिश यू नो मैं ग्यारह सेक्टर के चर्च में जाता हूं कभी कभी मैं देखता हूं कि पास्टर ही लगे हैं काम करने के लिए एंड एवरीबॉडी एल्स है पुटिंग देयर हैंड्स इन द पॉकेट एंड टॉकिंग टू इच अदर नो टेल पास्टर यू पुट योर हैंड इन द पॉकेट एंड टॉक टू पीपल एंड इनकरेज देम एंड वाई नोट योर वर्क रिकोगनाइज योर कॉलिंग ये छोटी छोटी चीजों के लिए प्रभु बहुत आशीषे देगा जब मैं अपने पास्टर के लिए पानी लेके जाता था जब वो ऐसे उसको खांग भी आ, खांसी भी आती थी तो मैं दौड़ के जाता था पास्टर जी ये लो पानी पास्टर जी क्या करना है लो मैं आपके लिए तबला पैक कर देता हूं पास्टर जी ये क्या करना है मैं इसको ऐसे उठा देता हूं जब हम यहां से शुरू करते हैं बाइबल में लिखा है वेन यू आर फेथफुल विद लिटल जब आप थोड़ी सी थोड़ी सी चीजों से फेथफुल हैं देन गॉड विल गिव यू बेग इफ यू आर नॉट फेथफुल विद लिटल देन प्रभु कहां से देगा भाई फिर आप बोलते हो कि यार हमें तो कुछ मिला ही नहीं हमारी प्रार्थनाओं का जवाब नहीं मिला बिकॉज वी आर नॉट फेथफुल और एक बात और बताना चाहता हूं एज ए बिलीवर हम सोचते हैं कि हमारी प्रार्थनाओं का जवाब नहीं आ रहा नहीं आ रहा नहीं आ रहा क्योंकि हम क्या करते हैं जो हमारी कॉलिंग है हम उसको साइड में रख के वी स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट पैस्टर्स अरे वो पास्टर तो ऐसा है वो पास्टर ऐसा है वो ऐसा है वो ऐसा है वो ऐसा है दैट्स नॉट योर जॉब अगर आपको कोई पास्टर के बारे में बताए पास्टर इज इज इट्स ऑफिस है उसका इट्स ही इज अनोइंटेड वन जब भी आपको कोई पास्टर के बारे में ऐसे बोले तो क्या करना है पुट योर टंग ऑन द टॉप अपने जवान को जो उसका इसको ना ऊपर लगाए तल्लू को ऐसे ऐसे बोले नो आई डोंट वांट टू हियर एनीथिंग अबाउट एनी पास्टर गॉड इज गोइंग टू ब्लेस यू उसका गुडनेस एंड मर्सी विल फॉलो यू ऑल द डेज ऑफ योर लाइफ thank you father let us pray thank you father lord we love you worship you our father give you glory honor and praise lord because you are worthy you are an awesome god you are jehovah jireh father thank you lord thank you for your goodness and mercy they follow all the time they follow me all the time they are follow me all the time wherever go they are following me thank you father lord you humble myself before you and before your people father प्रभु जी महिमा करता हूं पक्षे महान हमारे परमेश्वर धन्यवाद देता हूं 
Lord, you are wonderful, you are mighty. Thank you, Abba, Father. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. I pray that all of you are blessed. I pray that all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray everyone, all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. I pray that all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. Lord, I pray that all of you are blessed. जैसा कि आपने मुझे मेरी मदद किया प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रभु जी जिनको भी कोई भी तकलीफें हैं पिता परमेश्वर लड़ाई प्रे आप उनको हील करें यीशु के नाम से लड़ाई प्रे उनकी जो भी फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम है यू हेल्प देम फादर एंड डू द मेरिकल इन देर फैमिली फादर लॉर्ड जी इफ देर इज ए फैमिली प्रॉब्लम फादर आई प्रे यू हेल्प दम फादर Lord, I speak the blessings. I speak the healing. I speak the financial blessings. I speak more anointing upon them, Father God. Prabhu Ji, आपकी हजूरी उनके ऊपर बोलता हूँ. जब आपकी हजूरी उनके ऊपर आएगी, बाकी की चीजें सारी की सारी आ जाएंगी. Thank you, Father. धन्यवाद देता हूँ, Prabhu Ji. बाकी का सारे समय आपके हाथों में देता हूँ. Thank you, Abba. मैं जानता हूँ आप हमेशा मेरी प्रार्थना सुनते और मानते हैं. आपने ये प्रार्थना भी सुनी है और मानी है. मांगता हूँ यीशु के नाम से. आमीन एक और बात बताना चाहता हूं जस्ट ऑलवेज रिस्पेक्ट योर पैस्टर और जो भी पुलपिट में बोल रहा है रिस्पेक्ट दैट पर्सन हम मैं और मेरी वाइफ और हम हमारी फैमिली को आठ दस लोग हम गए थे छोटी सी बात मैं बताना चाहता हूं हम गए न्यू जर्सी में एक पा, पास्टर थे तो जब हम उनके घर में जाके रुके हम तो जाके खाना वाना खाया उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा खाना बनाया और हम जाके सो गए जब सुबह उठे चर्च जाने के लिए देखते कि हाँ कि सबके जूते पॉलिश करके रखे पास्टर ने एकदम से मेरे जूते भी एकदम से चमका के रखे सब हमारे जितने भी लोग थे उनकी जूतों को अच्छी तरह से साफ करके उन्होंने ऐसे लाइन में लगा दिया तो मैं कुछ भाई किसने किया तो पास्टर जी बोलते हाथ जोड़ के कहते मैं आप तो खुदा के बंदे हो मैं इससे ज्यादा और क्या खिदमत कर सकता हूँ मैं इससे मैं यही कर सकता हूँ आपके लिए मेरे पास और कुछ नहीं है Humble yourself. God is going to give you blessings. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us आखरी की प्रार्थना करते हैं. O Lord, you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Keep me from the evil one. I may not cause any pain to anyone. प्रभु जी धन्यवाद देता हूँ महिमा करता हूँ सबको प्रभु आशीष दे उसका पवित्र आत्मा आपके साथ रहे और आपकी अगवाही करे धन्यवाद देता हूँ महिमा करता हूँ मांगते यीशु के नाम से and see you next Sunday. Amen. Bye, God.